Hello and welcome to Access and to the second of two parts of my interview with Roy Staub, a site sculpture artist. And my, my biggest fear is I'm going to reproduce the same drawing I did five years ago because I used some of the same elements. Mm -hmm. In 1991 I started using ovals and I've been using ovals to circles to arcs and uh, I'm looking for that cross figure a a that's really smart. Cross figure? Yeah, a, a composite figure is a better oh, okay. word. Uh -huh. Crossing of lines, I'm making a figure and I'm looking for something really smart and it happens as long as you work on it. But I sit down and I draw it out and if it's not working I have to make it work. Okay. So uh, that's what I'm looking for. Okay. But now. not while I'm having dinner. Okay. Uh, unless I'm have a pressure. I remember when I was in Japan and we were driving 100 miles over the mountains in, San, in Hokkaido and I, I had to make a piece and I didn't know what to do and I got I was sketching all the way for the for three hours and I got there and I met the director and he said the symbol of our town is the four-leaf clover. Boy there's an idea. So everything you did on the car was was uh, nil. Abandoned. Abandoned. Yeah, I'm, I'm used to that too. And yeah. the moment they said four leaf clover, I, I knew exactly what I was going to do. I was going to do four leaves with a circle in the middle to join it together. And the clovers were all each an oval. And it worked. And it was just right. And, and I had 40 kids helping me and it was, it was a Japanese project. It was good. Okay, now I'm sure inevitably you find yourself going into something and it's not working. Or, or does that happen? I told you. I told you last time. I started this project. I, I sketched it out, and I had two circles. And I went. The tide was coming in too quickly, and I tried to plot it out, and I couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. And and I stopped and went home and played with the compass and resolved it at home then because I had the basic plan. But that was something that you couldn't do under the circumstances. Uh, what happens if you're in the middle of something? You just say, I don't like this. This isn't. This isn't up to my standard. But that's what I was saying. That wasn't up to your standard. It, it, I, 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 I could have fudged it through and rushed mm -hmm. it through, and, and then I, I'd be unhappy. Do you ever have a stubborn feeling that you want to go ahead and fix it rather than go back out and start again? Uh, uh, fixing it is resolving it. And, and usually you start with one element, and that's your basic form to start with. I mean, you use patchwork and, you know, put, you know, like, like patching up a tire, you're something here and something there, and then it's functional again. I realize the no, tire is No, 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 that's, that's, too, that's too hodgepodgey. I, yeah. I, really, okay. I really am strong in the, in the formal sense, and I, I consider where the piece is going to be made, how it's going to be looked at, and hopefully it's the right distance if I'm going to ca uh, use a camera to photograph it. And sometimes there's the wide-angle lens, and I went out there the other day, Sunday. I went out there Sunday uh, with a friend who had her camera and she was documenting it, it in her way and her camera did not have a wide angle lens. And I put the, ca the ladder where I usually have it to, to get a great picture and I was far too close. Okay, now, uh, oh, it's gone now. There was, oh, there it is again. Okay, with oh. camera two, you can see the, the, the one that you've currently done, yes. very much the one you've currently done. And you can't see it on the blue screen, but, but people do with their television cameras. So what essentially is it that you've done? And if you want to check it out a little bit by looking at the monitor, go ahead. I mean, you know, what is it? Is that a, that looks like a four-leaf clover a little bit. No, I, I, I was looking, I was fishing for a title. And I, I'm working with these forms and I cannot find a title. Mm -hmm. And um, in the dictionary, I found the word spectacle, spectacles. Northwest spectacles, because for me it looks like a pair of glasses. Oh. I started with two circles. Look at the way the lines go around. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And, and there's an arch in the back. And I don't want to be too didactic, I don't want to be so figurative, but that's what I feel of the works. So I didn't want to say spectacular, that's a bad word. And circumspect, somebody suggested that. That's too mischievous for me. I can't, uh, I'm not doing anything circumspect. I want to be. A, I want to have a positive form. And I, and I always think about my work as an object in nature. And nature is part of the uh, the piece. And the The piece is part of the environment. And it's to see through, to see nature in its fullest, and respect the nature. So I, I like the word spectacles. Okay. Where are you going next? Where do you go from here? Mm. I'm, I think I'm going out to Cape Cod. Oh, that's right. You mentioned that. I mentioned right? that. Uh, but yeah. nothing is sure because the problem is that my car, I have to get the car fixed on the way first. So that, that's the... You have to get your car fixed on the way. On the way, yeah. Why not get it fixed here? Um, here it's too expensive. And I need, I need someone who knows about how fixing Volkswagens. I got a, a Volkswagen, a, oh. ni a 1971 Volkswagen. Uh, I bought it from the Fluxus people. 
And the who? The, the Fluxist art movement people. Mm -hmm. Ken Freeman's car. And I, I tell people what that is. Oh, Fluxus is, is a movement from the 60s, late 60s. Mm -hmm. And uh, artists would um, make things that were kind of funky, or they would do some kind of interaction. They would come to a town and open it up and throw things around, or organize things, or protest things, do some things. An active movement is what Fluxus is about. Sometimes the, uh, another way of thinking. Yoko Ono is considered a Fluxus artist. And she has a piece at Jack Larson's Longhouse. Uh huh. Wait, wait, wait. When you say just another way, it's another way of thinking. Or, or, can well, you be more specific? Well, it was a performance art and action art. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So you're, go ahead. I'm sorry. And, and so I have I have that car, but I, I didn't study to be, uh, and I don't follow the fluxus movement exactly. But I do my interventions in nature my way. So I bought the car so I could do my artworks and be near it mm -hmm. while I'm working. So if I, I sleep in the car and I get up in the morning and I photograph it or I go back to work. So the car is essential to my, to my, my life. And, and it broke down when I got to New York and I got a Shrazi fix for $860 and it's not right, I have to get it fixed again. And, and, that, and then I go to Canada. Canada is, is, is the goal. Why? So I, uh, because it, it'll, it's a, a residency, I'll be with a group of other artists, mm -hmm. I'll be forced to create. And, and which I, I don't mind at all. And I have to be there August 10th and through September 3rd when is presentation day. And who finances it? The Canadian government. Oh, really? Yeah. That, I wish the American government would do that. So uh, there's a, a big feather in the hat for Canadians. I worked there three years ago and I got an email the other day. The piece that I made it was supposed to be very temporary uh, in um, Mont Tremblant. It's still there, surprisingly. And it's, it was made out of saplings, it stuck it in the water, it froze in the ice twice. The swallows didn't come in and land on it. No, not in Canada. What, what lands in Canada? Geese. <laughs> <laughs> They're all here. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Uh, something that was very ephemeral uh, sometimes can last longer. But do you have any great uh, objective in all this? To, I mean, you know, you, you, it's hard to say that you create a body of work, <coughs> excuse me, except from pictures. Um, you know, you have a body of work, but, but people can't see it because you can't have it in museums. Only in pictures. Only in pictures. But I have been doing installations recently in, oh, not recently, in 92, I made a piece inside a gallery in, in my hometown, Milwaukee. But of course, at that time, I was an outsider. I lived in New York. Okay, what else is being done in this area besides what you're doing in the, in, in the general category of site sculptures? Well, you know, we have, with you all, we have a group of people that came from England. Richard Long, for one. David Nash, for one. Richard Long did long walks. He, he lines up s stones in a long line sometimes. Sometimes he makes circles, and he copies the, the Celtic circles. And, and the Celt uh, circle is a very basic, wonderful form. And someone says, well, it's not in nature. Well, look at the moon. The moon is round. The earth is round. The tree is round. There's many round forms, so the round form is in nature. Um, Goldsworthy has many books of his ephemeral works. And, and he likes to make holes and, and stack things in a circular form. And um, David Nash uh, cuts dead trees with a chainsaw and makes forms out of that. And uh, a friend of mine, a friend I worked with, Herb Parker, from, from I think he's from Baltimore or South Carolina. He does, uh, he makes certain kinds of form using rammed earth and grass and sometimes metal. Well, what did you think uh, what, uh, the Central Park um, drapes? I, I knew you were going to get to that. Um, but now, what, what did you call that now? That uh, um, the Gates. The Gates. It was, the title was The Gates, yes. And I saw it a year before in photograph when I was at the, at the Metropolitan. I did not get to see what, it in life. Where did they do it before? They, they had sketches. Oh, okay. Uh, and and, and mock-ups. So you weren't in Central Park.